Hello and welcome to the Tom Sawyer Show here on the Warrior Sports Network. I'm Grant Wall, joined as always by Winona State head football coach Tom Sawyer. And coach, we talked last week, uh, a lot of good things that you did in the Duluth game, weren't satisfied with the, uh, the result. Uh, this past Saturday against Northern State, satisfied with the result uh, coming out with a 10-point victory, but a lot of things within the game that, that I'm sure that you're itching to get back on the practice field and, and try to correct. Well, the first thing is what you said was really true. We won a football game. This is Division II sports. Um, they have all the funding just like we do. Uh, they have uh, you know, student athletes that are very good. Uh, we just hadn't played them for a while, and I, and I don't think that we um, really took it seriously enough at times uh, with some of our players. Uh, try to lump them into a category, and uh, you got to realize that every week you play, um, every team in this level uh, can beat you. And so we came out, we started out fast, obviously. We started off with a halfback option pass, a reverse pass, and, and that was a lot of fun, got us going offensively. But I also think it might have hurt us in a way that our kids thought it was going to be easy. Um, so the longer you leave a team like that hanging around, uh, the more confidence they get throughout the game. And it was one of those games. But uh, believe me, I'm pretty excited. We win the football game and, and go to the next one. That's right. Every win in this league is, is a great win. Um, and Rayon Simmons uh, really was the workhorse for you on Saturday night. 32 rushes, 177 yards. Uh, a guy, you've talked so much about how he keeps getting better as the game goes on, and you could really see it on Saturday night. He was running hard even late in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he's a grinder. I mean, he just he is not flashy. There's nothing really pretty about the kid except the way he runs. Um, he'll make a couple guys miss uh, when he has to, but he just soon run through you then run around you. Um, but we're working on some of those things. But uh, we knew uh, with a young offensive line, you know, we had three starters that weren't playing in the game on the offensive line at all. And uh, two of the guys who replaced were, were a redshirt freshman and a true freshman. So having those guys on the field, uh, you know, sometimes Rayon got the ball and right there the defense was. So uh, we had to fight through that, and we did. And he really handled it well, um, took some shots in the game. And then Chichi Ojika came in and, uh, you know, really again as an, as an offset or a compliment, all of a sudden he took one to the house uh, with his speed. So uh, we tried to try to use that a little bit more, but we knew in that game uh, we, had to, we had to grind it out and we knew we were going to hand it to Ray a lot. Uh, and, and Ray now enters your upcoming game at Mary this Saturday, just needing 47 yards to become the school's all-time leading rusher. Uh, a record that I know you're anxious to get broken so that everybody can kind of move on from talking about it. But nonetheless, a massive milestone for somebody who's been so good for so long for you. Yeah, it's 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 really a pretty remarkable thing. You know, he's he's passed up. You know, David Ludy here um, just recently, and and you know, I got a chance. I had a chance to coach when when David was playing. I know him. He's now a principal. Uh, he talks about it all the time. He gives me a call when he got passed up and and congratulated Ray. Um, and then also Kevin Curtin, uh, one of the premier players we've ever had here at Winona State in a Warrior uniform, and it's also the younger brother of uh, Coach Curtin. So it'll be a sad day for the Curtins, but I know that they're they're proud of Ray as well. And uh, but uh, to be an all-time leader in any category in in school history, when your school's over 100 years of football, um, that's pretty remarkable. Absolutely, and. and Ray was the storyline out of Saturday, uh, but it was another balanced offensive attack. Uh, a little over 200 yards rushing, uh, just under 200 yards passing. Uh, so Ray gets all this, the headlines out of Saturday's game, but really another game where you, re where you move the football through the air and on the ground. Well, it's the first time we accomplished all of our goals, be 100% in the red zone. We did that with five touchdowns or whatever we ended up with. But um, each time we got inside the 25-yard line, we put it in the end zone. And that was something we didn't do against Duluth. Um, we didn't do it all the time against Crookston. So that's something offensively we really battle is to make sure we accomplish what we're set out to do, and that's put points on the board and we, and we have opportunities. And we did. We made all of our extra points, so that part of our game was very good. Uh, we'll, we'll move the tape forward now. Uh, a, gr a really good quarterback. He played last Saturday uh, in Northern State. Uh, and now a, another very, very good quarterback that you're going to face uh, in Mary uh, and their signal caller. Another guy, they, he does it a little differently than Northern's quarterback. Uh, moves the ball through the air most of the time. Uh, but another great offense you're going to see on Saturday. Yeah, they're very explosive. And, uh, you know, you got to play the win game out there as well. Um, a Coca-Cola field out there. But, you know, uh, Greg Bell Bagnell is a very good quarterback. He has been for a long time. Um, he knows and understands that offense probably better than the coaching staff. I mean, he's in it, and Myron has done a great job with him up there. Um, you know, he's got some pretty ex explosive receivers. So one of the big things we have to do is, is use our offense to keep him off the field and then give him as many different looks as we possibly can defensively because he will make some mistakes, but it's not very many. And, and when you get a chance, you gotta, you got to take advantage of it. Uh, you mentioned the receivers. Tyler Steffen uh, is their standout receiver, an All-American type kid uh, who, who, who's probably one of the best receivers that we have in this league. Yeah, and you know we saw him out there last year too, and, and I thought we did a pretty nice job on him. He got late, late in the game, he got a couple big uh, gains for us or get for them against us, and 
Um, but, you know, we see that every week. I mean, everybody's got them. And, uh, you know, everybody's got good quarterbacks, everybody's got good receivers. The, the game is going to be played on the line of scrimmage. we got to get our hands on them if we possibly can, and we got to win the battle for us offensively against their defensive front seven. So, really, that's where the, the game is, is battled because our quarterbacks and receivers can do it too. So, But that's our number one concern is to try to control him. He's not going to run around like uh, that you saw Jacobson do last week, but uh, he's going to want to sit back there and throw it. If he gets enough time, he can chew you apart. Last year, uh, a 46-43 Warrior victory, scoring in the last minute uh, to earn the win. Uh, do you expect maybe another one of those uh, back-and-forth type games with both offenses able to move the ball pretty well? Well, I hope it's only one side. You know, I hope we be able to move it pretty well, and I hope our defense comes and plays their tail off, and, and that's what we expect. Uh, but they're going to have some explosive plays. It's what they do. Um, they're very good at it, and, and they're going to find some holes. We just got to keep by the end zone. And if we can do uh, um, what we did even last week is, you know, make big stops when you have to, create a couple turnovers. Last week you saw we converted on both the turnovers. And, and so if we can do that defensively, they can get as many yards as they want. Don't care about that. It's points. And if we can hold them down in the 20s, uh, we should win the football game, and that will be a big day for us. Absolutely. Well, it will be fun to watch. Uh, make the trip out to Bismarck on Saturday for the Warriors taking on the University of Mary. Uh, it's a 2.30 start, uh, so make sure you tune in for that game. We'll be right back after this. Financial startophobia. Fear of financial endeavors causing putting off till the day after tomorrow that which should have been done the day before yesterday. If you have financial startophobia, I would recommend Merchants Bank. I had a little touch of financial startophobia, had a good recommendation, I went to the bank and had a great experience. Merchants Bank has personal service, I'm not afraid of anything. They've been around for over 130 years, you know who you're dealing with. Merchants Bank, the bank that service built. Welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show. Coach, some great highlights from last Saturday's win over Northern State. Let's take a look at those right now. All right, Coach, things got off to a fast start on Saturday. Uh, this was your first play from scrimmage offensively. Yeah, we, we talked about this uh, last Sunday, actually, a week before we played this uh, game, and, and I told Tyler we're going to open with that pass, and and threw it down to Sean. Now the pitch at the end of it wasn't planned. They did that on their own, but 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 it worked out well, and it eventually led to this Rayon Simmons touchdown. Yeah, Rayon was awesome. 177 yards rushing, had a big day for us, and and obviously you can see what's going on here on the defense with uh, Toby Frisbee making a big sack. That's right. You saw the sack. Now a couple of run stuffing plays here by the Warrior defense as well. Well, I thought we ran to the football very well. They ran the ball a lot, uh, and we shut that down. Uh, they did throw for some yards, but uh, their game was to run it, and our team shut that down. Is very proud of the defense. Created a couple turnovers, including this one, an interception by Darby Lundy. Yeah, Darby's playing really well for us, and, and the first year with the Warriors, and really starting to play well, and, and uh, we had a couple picks on the day, and that was big. It was a big turnover for us uh, down in our own red zone. Just had the interception. He's going to break up a pass here as well. Yeah, again, they were going after him a little bit. They don't know a lot about him, and uh, he's really, you know, him and Norgard are both very good defenders, so uh, they're tough in that secondary. Rayon Simmons doing what he does best, uh, and now John Tagland, uh, the quarterback, finding Tyler Spear for a nice game. Yeah, John didn't have his best game, but he, he did move the chains, got the job done when we needed him to, and, uh, you know, finding Tyler Spear, who's was, who was had, you know, three good weeks in a row for the Warriors. Made some time for himself on this one before throwing a touchdown. Yeah, again, back to Tyler again in front of the student section down there, which is really a lot of fun, but uh, he played well. And again, there you see our defense pursuing to the football. A good tackle. And here's another one of those turnovers, Morgan Weaver with a forced fumble. Yeah, it was awesome. And Ian Murray, I think, jumped on it. It was kind of fun. But uh, Morgan Weaver, as a, as a sophomore, really, really playing well. And that turnover led to this score by Rayon Simmons. Yeah, and he was led by Ishmael Karan, who did a nice job at fullback for us, had a big role in that game. Uh, so it was fun. Uh, a great defensive stop there. And then another, uh, forcing a miscue, a blocked punt here. Yeah, Ryan Singler got the blocked punt, and I don't remember who scooped it up, but uh, big play for us, and uh, we scored on that drive as well. Uh, you'll see a couple running plays here. First, Rayon Simmons with a nice gainer, and then his backup, Chichi Ojika, gets out in space and really gets going. Well, you know, he's one of the, coming out of high school, he's one of the fastest kids in the state of Minnesota, and you can see it right there where he gets some open space, he can do some damage in a hurry. So a nice compliment to the way Ray runs. Uh, and one more highlight here, pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, it's something we tried to get to all day, and, and uh, you know, we made a big play there, got him tackled out of bounds by Norgard. But, you know, that when we get pressure on the quarterbacks, good things can happen to us, and, and uh, you saw that on Saturday. That was a good-looking tape from the win over the Wolves on Saturday. Now, hopefully next week we'll have another tape just like that to show after your game at Mary. We'll be right back on the Tom Sawyer Show after this. Financial startophobia. 
fear of financial endeavors causing putting off till the day after tomorrow that which should have been done the day before yesterday. If you have financial startophobia, I would recommend Merchants Bank. I had a little touch of financial startophobia, had a good recommendation, and went to the bank and had a great experience. Merchants Bank has personal service. I'm not afraid of anything. They've been around for over 130 years. You know who you're dealing with. Merchants Bank, the bank that service built. Welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show here on the Warrior Sports Network. I'm joined now by Winona State punter Jeremy Newman. And Jeremy, this is your first year with the Warriors. Uh, how have things been going for you so far now that you're at Winona State? It's been going really well, actually. Uh, I'm learning a lot, refining my own techniques, and uh, finding out the true player that I actually am. Like, showing my actual abilities and being able to showcase that in front of all the fans. Uh, you took a little different route to get to Winona State. Can you just tell us a little about your background and, and what eventually got you here to, to Winona? Yeah, uh, originally I went to, I was just planning on going to college. I wasn't really planning on playing sports in college. Went to Northern Illinois, was there for three years. Walked on my second, second semester as a sophomore to NIU's football team. Played with them for a season and didn't get any playing time, so I, I realized I have a true passion to actually punt and play football in college. So, went to a few uh, showcase camps with uh, Jamie Cole, and that's that. And I, you know, Winona State. That eventually got you here yeah. to Winona. What was the thing about Winona State that made you want to come join the Warrior program? Um, a big selling point was Coach Optinorth. Uh, he just seemed very enthusiastic about this program and. Uh, Meeting Coach Sawyer for the first time, he he's really ingrained in this program, and he he's had a good track record, 16 seasons, and only one losing season was his first year, and he just seemed like he loved his job, and it seemed more like you were a player here than a number, and they know you by your name, and I thought that was a lot better than it was at Northern. Uh, so three games into your first season here with Winona State. Uh, just give us your thoughts about uh, how things have been going so far for you on the field. On the field, I mean, it's been going good. Uh, I haven't been able, I haven't been punting very much, which is a good thing because our offense is doing extremely well. So I feel like I have a lot of room for improvement because going into Duluth, we changed up a few things and got out of the normal punting techniques and went into a rugby style kick. And last week we got back to the normal traditional style and hopefully we get to keep that for the rest of the year. Uh, talk about that little catch-22 that a punter has. Uh, obviously you want to get out on the field as much as possible, uh, but the less you're on the field, generally speaking, the better it is your offense is doing. Uh, and so it has to be a little conflicting in your mind. You want to score as many points as possible, but you also want to get out there and yeah. show everybody what you can do too yeah. a little bit. Just uh -huh. talk about that little uh, that juxtaposition. It, the only thing that's the problem with is it's staying warm on the sideline. If I'm not going out there as much, I'm going to have to do more active, keep more active on the sideline, stay warm, stay loose. So in case I do have to go in, then I can. But seeing the offense put up points and not having to go out there as many times is also fun as well. Uh, you mentioned Co Coach Option North. He was the uh, the one who kind of started recruitment here. Uh, he took another job, and now Coach Barton is the special teams coach. Uh, talk to us about what Coach Barton has done uh, so far this season and how he works with you guys. Uh, he works with us closely as in keeping our head on straight and just thinking about like having a very short memory. You go out there, have a bad kick, it's done with, it's over, you're on to the next play. And he, he, helps, out, he helps with our confidence. He doesn't really, and the only thing is he doesn't really know much about punting per se, because he was a D-line in college, but he, you could definitely tell he tries and he wants to know more about the special teams, so he, he cares a lot about the special teams, which is what you want in a, in a coach. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, another portion of the special teams uh, that is a little bit new, the kick returners, uh, replacing Curtis Dewberry, uh, one of the best uh, kick returners in school history. And you got a lot of fresh faces back there. You, you punt to those guys each day in practice and get to see them a little bit. Uh, talk to us about how those young guys are doing fielding the kicks and, and in the return game. From when I first started kicking to them, they were a little shaky, didn't, know, didn't really understand what to do after they catch it. But so far, at, towards this part of the season, they seem like they've gotten a grasp on it and they've gotten a lot better at doing it. And 
seeing the ball and finding out where the ball is going to go. They get a lot better at it. Absolutely. Well, thanks very much for joining us, Jeremy. We will be right back here on the Tom Sawyer Show. We know State Assistant Brett Holinka will join us to talk a little bit about the Warrior defense. Financial startophobia. Fear of financial endeavors causing putting off till the day after tomorrow that which should have been done the day before yesterday. If you have financial startophobia, I would recommend Merchants Bank. I had a little touch of financial startophobia, had a good recommendation, and went to the bank and had a great experience. Merchants Bank has personal service. I'm not afraid of anything. They've been around for over 130 years. You know who you're dealing with. Merchants Bank, the bank that service built. And welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show. I'm joined now by Winona State Assistant Coach Brett Holinka. And Brett, it's your first year working with the linebackers. Uh, just give me a rundown of how your group's been playing so far through three games. Uh, we've been pretty solid through all three games, but uh, we've had a few missed assignments that, that have hurt us in, in key times, things that we have to get cleaned up uh, to progress throughout the season. But so far, we're, we're, uh, we're staying healthy, which is the most important part, and uh, playing really really hard. Uh, it's, a, it's a mix of a group. Um, some, some young guys, uh, Ryan Gertz, a sophomore who was conference newcomer of the year last year. I got some seniors, so you have some experience. Um, but it's a really talented core of linebackers that you're putting on the field each week. Uh, yeah, I mean, we got some returning experience at the inside position and also at the outside position with Alex Coulter, a returning all-conference linebacker. Uh, so he's, he's been a great leader for us so far this fall. And now we're starting to get some of the young guys and the newcomers, Terrell Foster, Morgan Weaver, starting to play a lot of reps for us as well as, as James Rubel. So. Uh, what's it been like? You were an all-conference guy uh, in college as a linebacker yourself. Now you're coaching linebackers. Uh, how do you make that tra transition from being a player to a coach and be successful at it? Uh, you really have to go back and kind of break down how you learned how to play linebacker and, and try to relay that to the, to the new guys you're teaching. Um, it's it's not it's not terribly tough to do, but some guys are some. Thankfully, I wasn't that good, so I had to be perfect at whatever I did. So there's some coaches who are really good, and it, everything was natural for them. It's hard for them to teach teach it to another person, but I had to learn the hard way. I wasn't very good when I was younger, and I had to do exactly what the coaches told me to be better. So uh, last week you went up against a a running type of quarterback from Northern State. Now you go up to Mary this weekend. Uh, have Craig Bagnell, who's a guy who likes to throw the ball everywhere. How do you prepare for those different types of quarterbacks and get your linebackers ready to go? Well, first of all, we have to get a great look from our scout team. We, we're lucky to have two retro freshman quarterbacks that can run the ball and throw the ball, so they're going to give us a great look during the week. Uh, as far as our game plan goes, you know, it changes each week with every team we face. So, you know, it's went from containing a quarterback to now being able to play some coverage or or show some different blitzes so we can get some pressure on the quarterback. This is a conference that week in and week out, uh, the offenses are just so dangerous. How do you keep going every week knowing that you got to go against another really, really high-powered offense? I mean, you got to go week by week. you got to take it one play at a time and can't uh, get ahead of ourselves. got to stay composed and uh, can't let any kind of pressure get to us about the different offenses. We see everyone's good. and We have great players in our defense as well. So. I think we're suited for the for the whole season. Uh, I imagine you try to instill your kids a uh, a short memory too. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing about playing defense is you gotta go the next play, the next 24 seconds. You have one second to get over that play, and now on to the next one. Uh, what's it What's it like working for uh, uh, on a, on this Warrior staff? Uh, a lot of coaches who've been around for a while, uh, and a mix of some younger coaches as well. Uh, but a group that really knows the NSIC in and out. What's it like to now be a member of this staff? Uh, I feel grateful to be a part of the staff. It, I've learned a lot so far since I've been here. Um, the defensive coaches have, have seen a lot of a lot of different teams, uh, especially Coach Curtin's been here a, a long time, and the addition of Coach Barton and, and Coach Bronze played in the NSIC. So uh, we got a lot of experience in this league. Well, thanks very much for joining us, Brett. We appreciate it. And remember, catch the Warriors Saturday, 2.30, up at the University of Mary. If you can't make the trip, Listen to it live on 89.5 KQAL or catch the game on HBC Channel 24. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next week.